Hello and welcome back to the Three Pillars Podcast. I'm your host, Chase Tobin, a.k.a. Tobinated Motivator, and this is episode 51, Assess Your Threats. 51 episodes, guys. Appreciate you uh, being on this journey with me. It's been uh, freaking fun. Um, for those of you just, just now tuning in, welcome to the party. This is a podcast where we use spiritual, physical, and mental fitness to grow closer to the Lord on our walk through life. Um and it's been, let me tell you, it's been been quite a walk, uh, even over the past couple of years, right? I think a lot of people have grown um, closer in their spirituality, stronger in their physical fitness, stronger in their mental fitness. Um, and it's been really cool to see everybody uh, really uh, push themselves to those limits. So uh, for those of you who are uh, on this journey with me, awesome. If you're just tuning in, awesome. Uh, if you're watching on Rumble, uh, or YouTube, please give a, a subscribe. Uh, let me know how you're doing down in the comments. Uh, if you're listening to this on Anchor or Apple, Amazon, Spotify, you name it, um, appreciate you guys leaving a, a rating review uh, and then sharing this uh, as we go, you know, farther on in this in this broadcast. Today we're going to be talking about um, kind of a threat and vulnerability assessment. And I'll get into what all that is here shortly. I just again wanted to thank everybody for tuning in. It's been quite a blessing uh, for me. It's been very therapeutic for me, and I hope it has been for you guys as well. All that being said, we're going to get started with a quick word of prayer as always, and then we're going to just dive right in and have a quick talk about uh, assessing our threats. All right? Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for all the many blessings that you give us each and every day. Thank you for giving us the tools to bolster our defenses, fortify our positions, and to guard our hearts against all of the uh, evil and wickedness in the world, Lord. Lord, I ask that you just continue to guide us and direct us, continue us to be strong in our faith for you. Uh, give me the words to say, give anybody listening uh, or viewing the eyes to see, ears to hear, and the heart to receive uh, anything that will edify them and bring them closer to you, Lord. I ask all this in your most holy name. Amen. So what is a threat and vulnerability assessment. When I say assess your threats, what does this what does this mean? Well, I work for a company. It's a security and defense company where we go onto a site wherever you know duty calls and we work with a uh, point of contact and so usually an administrator or facility director, someone who really has a, a mind for security at that facility and we help them evaluate their 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 practices what they actually do day to day uh, evaluate their physical uh, defenses and then give them viable solutions and cost effective solutions to make their facility uh, <clears throat> even more more fortified that's what i do for a living and it's fun it's a lot of fun i get to be a consultant i get to work with a lot of really neat people uh, and help them just at the end of the day be be safer, more secure, and at the end of the day go home to their families. That's the whole the whole point of what my company does: safety, and security, security, and defense. So I say all that to say, what are you doing every day? How can we assess your threats and your vulnerabilities in your own life? We can take it from a top-down approach and really look at how we can bolster our defenses. So starting with with physical, if I'm if you're looking at your physical threats each and every single day, it's a couple of ways to look at it. A is someone actively trying to harm you, whether it's physical harm, they're coming after you with a knife, a gun, they're trying to attack you. You're in a domestic relationship that's abusive. If somebody is uh, actively out to out to pursue you like that, right? That's phys physical harm. Other kinds of harm are, you know, are you being good stewards of your body? Is something that you're doing physically harming your body? So we got two things to talk about physical. So if somebody's actively trying to hurt you, say in your home, do you have adequate locks? Do you have the proper lighting on your house to, to deter criminal activity? Do you have you know, a bunch of stuff in your garage? That when your garage doors open, people can come and say, oh man, that looks kind of neat. Maybe I should break into this garage at some point. Oh, if they have nice stuff in their garage, maybe they have nice stuff in their house. Something that simple, clean out your garage. Make sure it's you know, 
by tidy, organize, or keep your daggone door shut. Lighting, you know, something as simple as lighting. Lighting makes the cockroaches scatter, as they say. Same thing with criminals. If there's a light or a camera focused on a, on a place that they might want to break into, that can deter a lot of things. Your, again, your lock systems. Do you have a deadbolt? Do you have a chain lock? Do you have a steel, steel core door? Do you have a really well fortified door? How is your storm door? Do you have a keypad? Do you have, there's a lot of things you can do uh, to deter criminal activity and keep yourself protected in your house. Your windows. When was the last time you, A, checked the functionality of your windows in case you, not even for a offensive threat. What if you have to get out in the case of a fire? Do you know how to get out of your windows? Do you have a plan? Do you have an escape plan? Do you have something in place with you and your family where if X event happens in your house, you can A, get out, B, rendezvous somewhere and get a head count and C, egress from that position uh, to somewhere that's safer something to think about. It's just, a, it's just, you know, simple protective threat measures. If you've got, uh, do you have a fence in your yard? Do you have a fence in your yard that's lined with uh, hostile vegetation to prevent somebody from when they come jump over the fence, if they can get over the fence, uh, did they land in a sticker bush or do you have the sticker bushes on the outside of your fence so they can't even get to the fence to cross it in the first place? Little things like that. Uh, Crime prevention through environmental design. I think we've talked about it before. That's kind of physically assessing your threats. Again, back to your windows. You know, if you're in an area where you think there's going to be you know, drive-by shootings or errant or bullets flying at your uh, at your home, or where's your bedroom at? Do you think you need security film? Do you need ballistic glass? There's a lot of things you can do to harden your own uh, your own home, but you really have to. You don't have to jump into full like you know prepper mode. But you can really assess, okay, what's going on? What's the likelihood of this, this event going to happen in my home? How do I protect against it, right? So that's like physically somebody's heart wanting to harm you, come after you. Another side of that is we'll get into mental in a minute. Or what are you doing to make people mad at you? <laughs> right? Why is somebody actually trying to come get you? Okay. Uh, but we'll get to that in just a minute. Um, but the other part of uh, physical threat reduction is what you're putting in your body. Are you sitting around eating cheese doodles and eating cheeseburgers every day and effectively poisoning your body because you're not active uh, on a daily basis either? If you're if you're going to the gym a lot and you're a fit, physical fitness kind of guy or girl, um, you can afford to eat a cheeseburger once in a while. You can afford to eat cheese doodles once in a while. But if that's all you're doing, you are causing, you are self-inflicting harm on yourself. I said self too many times there, but I'm trying to drive the point home. You're inflicting harm on yourself. How do you mitigate that? You put the, what does Arnold say? Put the cookie down, right? Put the cookie down. Get yourself some good water. Stop putting crud in your system. That's your, your body's a Ferrari and you're putting in really low octane fuel and sludge. To, to maintain this as optimal performance. That's not going to do it. It's not going to cut it. It's not going to cut the mustard, as they say. You have to be mindful of what you're doing to your body physically, what you're putting into it. Because that will reduce a lot of, you can reduce a lot of inflammation based off the foods that you eat. Because a lot of people, that's what's really wrong with a lot of people is they're, they're inflamed. Whether it's, if you're very overweight or you're kind of a, you know, I get a little, some inflammation in my back every now and again when I eat too much sugar. Just things to be mindful of. Are you going to the gym? Are you going for a walk? Are you swimming? Are you running? Are you doing something active, you know, four or five days a week to offset, you know, some things to keep you going in the right, in the right direction? These are literal threat mitigation strategies for your body. This one's, this, this one, there's no charge for this one, ladies and gents. Mentally, what can you do mentally to reduce threats in your life? It's the same kind of principles as physical. What kind of barriers do you have set up to prevent threats from getting in? Are you in relationships that are toxic? How can you get out of these relationships? Is it with family? Do you need to cut family off? Do you need to cut friends off? Do you need to move? Do you need to find a better, uh, a different job that you're not in a toxic work environment. There's a lot of things you can do in that realm um, to mitigate 
external. Now, that being said, there are some people out in this world that can never seem to find, uh, you know, somebody who they can get along with, or there's always something with somebody else involved. Maybe these people need to take a step back and see if they are the actual common denominator. Are you just really hard to get along with? Are you just ornery? You, you know what I mean? That that could be something to um, to that. You know, if it's always somebody else's problem, you can never. I don't buy that all the time. You know, maybe it, you know coincidence. You know, once twice. Okay, maybe you just you know had a bad luck of things. But if it's over and over and over again, you can't seem to keep a roommate. You can't seem to keep a job. Um, there might be something else going on there. But if it's truly a toxic environment that you can't can't deal with, you don't need to be in there anyways. Um, but just that's that's it's a cop out answer. That's a case by case basis you have to deal with, right? What else is like same thing? Like we've talked about this over and over. I try to emphasize this as much as possible. What are you putting in your body mentally? What are you reading? What are you looking at? What are you listening to? All these things. Uh, are you listening to ways to increase your survivability in case of X event? Are you listening to, you know, things that help you be a better gardener or chicken farmer or anything like that? Are you watching videos, how to repair stuff? I've watched videos, learned how to repair stuff in my home, dishwashers, washing machines, you know, et cetera. Uh, things I didn't know before, you know, we're starting to do little kind of urban homestead, suburban homestead thing right now. And we're doing better with our gardening. We're doing, we got, we're going to be doing other things, um, in that realm. So these things you've got to take into consideration. Um, and it, again, that just kind of covers the whole mental gamut. How do we uh, take care of ourselves in, in, in that in that realm, right? Uh, the final realm is is your spiritual defenses. Do you have your armor? Of, do you have the full armor of God? A, do you even know what it is? Do you have all these things? B, are you maintaining it? And C, are you putting it on? Are you putting on your armor? Because just if I have, if I'm, if I'm a, I'm a veteran. If I've got all my kit, I've got my helmet, I've got my gloves, eye pro kit, plate carrier, uh, you know, my boots, my uniform, my rifle, my rounds, extra water, eye fat, extra chow, you know got all my radio equipment, everything like that, ready to go. But if it's just sitting in a corner over there, not on, it's not doing me any good. You got to put your armor on every day like you're going out on patrol. Because we talked about it last week. If you're if you're out there on patrol, have this well-fortified defense. If your house is well-fortified, if your heart is well-fortified, if your mind is well-fortified, if your body is well-fortified, that's going to make you a very, very hard target for the devil. Are you reading the Bible? Are you reading the word? That's filling your mind full of, uh, you're edifying your, your whole system when you read the word, when you take it to heart. You know, oh, just open a book, open the book and find a, a chapter and verse, read the whole chapter, whatever verse pops out and really reflect on that. Get, there's apps out there every day is a different verse that will let you reflect on that. Find a devotional that has a verse and a little study on it that will help you reflect on on that and grow closer every day. That's how you that's how you develop your spiritual defenses. And what you can do with your spiritual defenses, you can eventually go on the offense. That doesn't mean go out and you know demon hunt or anything like that. But that means now I can take these skills that I have and go uh, uh, apply them to somebody else and help them bolster their defenses. So if you have all these little defenses, you know, set up everywhere. It makes it really hard for the devil to operate in a home, in a neighborhood, in a community, in a city, in a county, in a state, in a country, right? If everybody has that, has that goal. Assess your threats. How, how, how am I spiritually attacked every day? Is it because of these other things? Am I putting stuff in my body Mentally, am I putting stuff in my body physically that is making me weaker and more susceptible to spiritual attacks? Is there a long line of stuff going on in my family or in my own in my own life that I have that's unresolved and not dealt with that makes me vulnerable to spiritual attacks? Spiritual oppression is a real thing. Generational curses, I believe, are a real thing. And unless they're dealt with properly, 
How do you deal with them? You pray, you repent, you rebuke. You you change your way and somehow you you confront it to a point. If it's something you obviously can't can't you know you know you're you're <laughs> I, I can't even think of things like maybe your grandfather you know great grandfather was two timing on your your grandmother and there's an illegitimate child somewhere and it hasn't been in a family I don't know there's a lot, a lot of things that can happen like ah. Uh, it's really hard. It's really hard to, to assess everybody individually, right? Everybody's got their own like skeletons in their closet, right? But you still have to uh, address them from time to time. And at some point, the buck stops with you. Okay, I'm done with this. I rebuke it. I repent. I, I am leading my family to the Lord. Lord, take this from me. And then continue living and, and uh, for the glory of the Lord. It's it's obviously not that simple, but you, that's that's the way to to begin it, is to identify what it is and to re, and to really rebuke and pray on it. Your whole family, if it's something that serious, get everyone involved. If it's a spirit of alcoholism, lust, if it's uh, addiction, you name it, get your whole family on board praying with it. That will drive it out. So. Assessing your threats. It's it's a, it's a it's a you start with a forty thousand foot view and you narrow it down, and then you put your proper defenses in place. Doesn't cost anything, really. May cost you to change your lifestyle up a little bit, and hold yourself more accountable to the Lord, to yourself, to your family. Oh, but uh, it requires work. Yeah, it does. It does. That's the problem with a lot of folks in the world today is they don't want to hold themselves accountable to anybody because I can do whatever I want uh, to, to a point. Yeah, you're right. But there are things in this world that are happening that unless you take some kind of accountability for, there are going to be massive, massive damages and massive repercussions for the foreseeable future. So sack it up. And be men and women and warriors for the Lord. Because that's how we're going to get through it, ladies and gents. That's all I got. <clears throat> Assess your threats. Do a threat and vulnerability assessment and see where you're strong, see where you're weak, see what you can do to get more resources to help you uh, on this journey. All right? Guys, I appreciate you tuning in. We're going to hit a quick word of prayer. Do some housekeeping stuff, and we'll get you out for the weekend. Thank you all for, for tuning in. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for just giving us this guiding light, this source of direction, this, this method to exist in this world but not be of this world. Lord, thank you for putting your hedge of protection over us when we're weak, when we've got the slings and arrows of the world coming at us, and thank you for taking them for us, Lord, and then for giving us back on our feet, giving us the armor to go out and push back against the forces of evil, Lord. Lord, we thank you for loving us. We thank you for protecting us. And most importantly, we thank you for just what you did on the cross for us, Lord. Lord, I ask that you bless anybody tuning into this from the tops of their head to the bottoms of their feet, that we can all grow closer to you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, guys, it is uh, it is Holy Week, so I, pre I, I wish you nothing but blessings. I remember what happened this week. If you don't know the story, you should probably go to church this week. It's gonna, it'll really um, wake you up to a lot of things, really take it into heart what happened on the cross and why that event is so important and why that not just him, uh, Jesus dying on the cross, but him resurrecting, coming back to life with death defeated. It's a beautiful thing. It's very important as we enter this, uh, this season, this Easter season to really reflect on where we are, you know, strong, where we're weak and how we can turn ourselves over to the glory of the Lord. Because we owe that to him for all he did for us. Guys, again, this is a Three Pillars podcast. I thank you, thank you all for tuning in.
Uh, again, if you're watching on YouTube, Rumble, um, please give a subscribe, a follow. Uh, let me know how you're doing in the comments. If you're listening to this on the other podcast platforms, Anchor, Spotify, Apple, Amazon, wherever you're at, um, please uh, share this, leave a rating review, and we'll uh, keep going on from here. Next week, 52 episodes. I told you I'd give it to you. So this is awesome. I'm, I'm very excited. So you guys have, have a phenomenal weekend. God bless you. Happy Easter. And we will talk to you all soon. Tobinator, out.